Hello, and welcome to this introductory talk on the thematic repertory, which is a new work I've uh, created to go alongside synthesis. You can really think of this as an expansion of the mind chapter of synthesis. So within you've got um, themes that are comprised of uh, several rubrics from the mind section that are quite similar. So let me just go inside and show you, and that should be the best way to, uh, to demonstrate. So this first rubric, Absorbed or Introspective, if I click inside, I can see that the rubric is comprised of the following, Absorbed, Brooding, Introspection, Meditating, and then a smaller one, Inclination to Sit and Meditate. So with the mouse, you know, I can move across to these and then I can preview the, uh, the remedies contained in these, in these sub-rubrics. And you'll see straight away that there are families in here as well like the Papaveraceae or Poppy family, the Imponderables, the Melancholic Temperament. So these are all additions that I've made and when you see my author name these will be new additions um, that I've made using the, syn the synthesis editing tools essentially. So I can see what's in each um, rubric, each super rubric and I can take those if I want to in the normal way by dragging and dropping but really the main um, principle behind this is to take broader, bigger broader rubrics in the same way that Scher's Q repertory works and Marilli's themes work so I'm in here and I can take the rubric for absorbed, introspective and then I can navigate back um, using the um, <clears throat> control or command and my mouse wheel I can zoom in or out on the um, navigation window there. So let's look at another example. Here we have carefree, consisting of mind carefree, casual, childish, frivolous, hopeful, optimistic, playful. So I can jump into the repertory there. So here's the, um, <clears throat> the super rubric, carefree. You can see that I've arranged the um, the layout a bit differently so if you want to do that go to the preferences icon of your repertory view click on remedies and authors select descending degree by default it will be set up this way but I sometimes find myself changing to this to this view and you can obviously show the repertory in two columns as well if you're more used to that So you can see straight away that um, there are some families within the rubric. So if I just pick up Lepidoptera, the butterfly family, and pull that onto the thematic repertory icon, I can instantly do a search to see which rubric it's in. <clears throat> okay, so that's one way of using the repertory. Similarly, I could do I could right click and then search for the remedy in the current document only. So you see it's searching for a remedy. This is one of the amazing flexible things of Radar Apis is that you can um, you know a family can be entered into the repertory uh, just as normal remedies can, and that allows a you know real flexibility um, that when we come to look at a case example in a moment, you'll see that it's. Um, that it can be very very helpful but it's also a helpful way to study the themes of um, of these remedy families and then there's a new remedy here of the Atlantic herring um, which I can search for in the current document Let's see the uh, themes so yeah this theme is a is a big one there so if I can just uh, quickly show you how you would build up a repertorization using this this new repertory. Let's say we take connected, feeling of connection, and then the opposite side, um, disconnected here, detached, disconnected, and separated. You can see the rubrics that, it, that it's built up from. Then if I type, I can find to do with flying or floating. These are all the component parts. And then 
look for okay intuition I can take that one as well yeah and we'll take this rubric as well comprised of the following sub rubrics so I'll just drag that down into my new clipboard click there so you can see using those rubrics that um, the first four entries are families so birds, aves, the latin drug remedies, sea animals, noble gases followed by uh, some actual individual remedies and holonium, herring, opium so you'll see that you'll get uh, quite different results using this repertory there's lots more um, uh, newly proven remedies that are going to come through using this using this repertory but also that's because of the the rubrics we've chosen there those kind of states if I look at another repertorization with a different set of rubrics you'll see uh, much more classical uh, remedies coming through there okay so in this next section I'd like to show you a bit about how I work in a thematic way uh, using this this new tool. So if we look at a case example, uh, this is a case of a female age 40, her physical symptoms were um, as, as thus, head pain with an internal stabbing coming from the inside at the top between the forehead and crown, like the brain rotting from inside. It's moving outward, sharp or heavy. Feels like when you're just about to vomit, a real nervous feeling, like when you have a tummy bug without realizing it was coming on and thought you were having a panic attack. The breathing speeds up, can't get breaths in quick enough. Sickness, nausea goes across the back. So some good physicals we could use for our repertorization. But as we move through the case, uh, the, the more sort of central issues become much more of a psychological or emotional nature. So these are just extracts taken from, from the case. Um, not necessarily in the same order as they as they came through so a sense of trust being disappointed by someone who you trust to look after you or take care of you a strong sense of betrayal over five years that trust got stronger and stronger but he abused my trust on that day knew i was prepared to open up then he was really insensitive it's like i've been betrayed my relationship with parents especially my mum is the same it's a betrayal an enormous sense of disappointment and not being valued and being rejected, not being supported. My dad filled up the gaps, but he's not there anymore, and that's a huge sense of loss. Feeling upset, sad, betrayed. So betrayed is coming through several times. Usually I cover all those feelings up with anger. I couldn't even speak. So this situation that she's talking about, uh, it doesn't necessarily really matter what the situation was, it's about the response to it. It opened up dark memories. My parents lost their first child, and it brought up memories of when I was young, the way I behaved, or my mum's expectations of me. I was the replacement daughter for the one that didn't survive. A lot of feelings of not being valued, which has come up before. Parents rejected me when my daughter was sick. My mum was totally useless to me. My daughter is critically in hospital, and he, the therapist who she's talking about, was the first person to support me. Later on, she talks about her dreams. The dream of keeping the family safe. We found a lovely house next to the sea. I found my dream home. Let's buy it. Suddenly the family felt safe. It was about being home, safe, comfortable and happy. So that dream gives you a good sort of nucleus of information uh, of what's kind of centrally important. Uh, at a subconscious level for the patient. In another dream, a cat turned into a fox or a wolf and then turned into a man who tried to force me up against a wall, trying to keep it safe, then it turned into a threat. It was about keeping the family safe. So the family, safety and threat are all important themes here. As, are, as is the feeling of betrayal and uh, being unsupported. So with the family, we walked into into a huge crowd. This is another um, sort of uh, 
scenario she's she's describing that, that recently happened. My husband wasn't homing in on the dangers, danger and threat again. There was a really unpleasant crowd. He was walking into it blind. I took our daughter from him and asked him to walk in front, but he just walked off. Didn't stay with us, so there's this feeling of being left again. Just walked through the crowd. I started pushing my way through, then the lady was trying to start a fight with me. I put my blinkers down and started marching through. So there's this uh, fighting energy coming through in, in, in life as well. When I got through I lost it and was absolutely furious. Straight away after losing it I couldn't breathe anymore. I was going into a panic attack, shaking, going into a fight or flight response. Very angry, can get aggressive. My response to that is that my breathing will go. can't breathe properly and then I realise what is happening. It's not until the breathing goes that I realise this is a panic, panic attack now. Some other um, sections from the uh, from the consultation. Uh, my mum couldn't cope with the emotions of losing her first daughter. She used to say, what's wrong with you? I could have had somebody else. Her grief took precedence over my needs. So there's a big um, sore spot with, with the mother and, uh, and how she's been um, cared for by the mother. A feeling so deep in my stomach, the most horrible thing she ever said to me was, you deserve it. My dad is bullied, she's a bully, mum's a bully. And In another dream, the opposite male role came through. Um, this man in the dream gave me a really nice paternal hug that was comforting, like giving a hug to say sorry. He smelled nice and was well kept. Nothing sexual, just a warming cuddle. And then again, the care that my mum was giving my dad is borderline abusive, aggressive and undignified. Not care. So some other bits from the consultation. All of a sudden I need to run away from this. A need or a wish to be back in my early 20s. And I'm obsessively looking at my past from that time when I just wanted to run away. It's escapism, longing, itching to go to a big party and dance it all away. She also said... If it wasn't for my mammal brain, I would have torn you to pieces. I was being too polite to the man that ripped me up. I would have ripped him up straight back, would have won that fight. So it's starting to get much more sense of uh, the animal kingdom coming through there. With words like being ripped and would have won that fight. The body can tell it's being attacked and also so angry I had to grip my teeth and just suppress it. I was beside myself, gritted my teeth and waited till I got out, feeling under threat and also allowing somebody else to make me feel weak lowers my self-esteem. Just want my normal self back. Yeah. So the themes in this case, betrayed is really big, rejection, low self-esteem, grief, unsupported, undignified or humiliated, embarrassed the wrong daughter not accepted by the mother so if I go back to Radar Apis and we'll just move to a new clipboard there so betrayed we know is a really big theme for this individual so I'm going to go into the thematic repertory and find betrayed it also includes these other sub rubrics but I'm just going to go with the large super rubric for now. And then danger was also a big factor throughout this case. And these are all the different things relating to danger. And I'm just going to take the theme, the main theme. There was a feeling of being forsaken, left alone, and also being dependent on others. So I'm going to take that theme as well. theme of the mother. You can see just how many rubrics have gone into this one. And also the feeling of being neglected, rejected or unappreciated. And let's see what happens with those five rubrics there. Okay. So there were quite strong hints of the animal kingdom in that case. So what we could do straight away is to uh, see which animals are there. So we've got Lacumanum, 
Lacasis, Laclupinum, the wolf, uh, which really interested me in this case. And I uh, got to it just from using these five rubrics which covered the, the themes of the case very well. We'll see if I open the um, patient file here, you can see the way that I've worked using um, Radar Opus's patient file. I can, um, because I've marked certain uh, sentences with uh, a degree here, I can then um, right click on my consultation and then sort symptoms by their intensity. And then I can see what the, the um, important sentences or phrases that the, the, the patients used. Could be symptoms, could just be how they express their, their situation, anything. And you'll also see that uh, on the right here I've used tags. Now you can create your own tags in Radar Opus. So if I right click again and limit to what I said was uh, an indication of the animal kingdom, we can just see those symptoms now. So this is very much the way I work in Radar Opus. Uh, and what I can do from here is to um, open the last consultation. Let's see, I think it's this one. Yep. So I'm going to open that consultation and afterwards this is the repertorization I made. Luckily, pine them there. And what I did, you can also do now in Radar Opus, which is nice, is to go to Families and then type Families. Here it is. Right click and limit. And then go here, back to the main clipboard, and you see halogens milks, spiders, birds, matridonals, etc. So this families rubric is coming from another new repertory that I built and is already in your program. It's called new and updated families. So it contains some new families like drugs, lepidoptera, uh, a bigger rubric for the birds, etc. So you can use that in tandem with the thematic repertory. And then what I did, you know, to sort of confirm the choice of Laclupinum was to look in Patricia Hatherley's excellent repertory and do a sort of reverse repertorization to see that I could find everything else in the case that was important. And then I felt very confident to prescribe that remedy. So there we are. And there's a, a sort of similar repertorization there between using synthesis. You can see even that dream of wanting fatherly love came through in the proving and the feeling of not belonging to the family. So it felt a very good fit overall. And uh, so that's uh, that's it really. That's my introduction to the thematic repertory. I hope you, uh, you uh, consider adding it to your radar opus and find it helpful in your in your cases. Thanks very much.